Hey guys, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm back because I'm not making any promises but I wanted to do a little check-in with you guys whilst I was doing stuff in the kitchen um, and let you know what's been happening, what I'm planning on doing channel-wise. Shall we turn you guys this way so it's not such... Is that alright? Yeah, I know, I know. It looks a mess, but it's because I just um, well, I'm going to clear away yesterday's dishes and do dishes just now. So I'll quickly do that. So, let's have a quick reflection on last year. Last year was not a good year for me. In case you're wondering, we keep our sponge in a little ice cream tub because one of my cats likes to run off with sponges. It's not fun. <laughs> Um, yeah, 20, 2019 was not a good year for me. Started off with um, being told I was basically financially inept and was on a, a very direct road to bankruptcy. That was terrifying. And then our cooker broke. Um, Rowan had his dietitian appointments. He, uh, what else? My phone broke. My phone broke as well. Bone broke, cooker broke. Um, I'm pretty sure our Hoover broke too. I can't remember exactly. That could have been before 2019. I can't remember. And then summer was alright. It was basically feeling like an inept parent trying to get my daughter into nursery, not really knowing what to do, and no parenting friend of mine having the kindness to tell me what to do. I don't know why, it just seems although um it just seems although certain things in the parent parenting realm around here where I am seems to be like closely guarded secrets. Like if you don't know well you're a crap mom um kind of thing. So that was that was fun. And then do you guys know Nick and I had a, a massive bust up over summer. We almost broke up. You know, and we've been together for like 13 years. What, well, sweetheart? What, darling? You want a movie? Okay, well, one second, mommy. I'll put on a movie for you. What one do you want to watch? Have you picked one? kids are now watching the news. <coughs> Guys, off his pop. Go, on. go watch your film. Go on, go watch your film. What was meant to be just picking a film turned into a tantrum. Little man needing the toilet. Me walk, literally punching myself in the face. And another tantrum. may not be in the best time to start filming this video but to be honest if I don't do it now it's not going to get done and that seems to be a lot of things in my life lately if I want to do anything I just have to kind of get on with it that seems to be the lesson I've learned through the entirety of 2019 if I want to get like it was kind of rock bottom for me it was I'm sure worse, worse things have happened to people. I'm not saying I had the worst year in the world ever, but in terms of my life, it was pretty shit. It was, it was the pits. And I've had enough. I've, I've, I've had enough of putting other people before me. And that includes to an extent my kids. <laughs> And that's something that I made feel guilty a lot about is, oh, you're a mum. Why do you have ambition? Is being a mum not enough? No, 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 being a mum isn't enough because you know what? Your kids grow up, your kids leave the house, and then you have nothing. They're just going to be one of those... 
those old women with her old women friends that don't really like each other. You only know each other because your friend, your kids were in the same class together, so you were forced to spend time with each other. And that's what that's what motherhood looks, motherhood in the future looks like to me, because that's all I see. It's all I see. It's all I've ever seen is mums that don't really like each other, having to spend time with each other because their kids are friends with each other. And then when the kids have flown the coop and everything, they're still forcing themselves to spend time with these people that they don't really like. Just because they're the only people they know. And they have no career. And any ambition they had, it's, it's almost too late in life for them to get started because the cost of bringing up a family is less than so much in debt that they can't even get a foothold to get going. I know this is probably a long-winded, arduous example of my point, but it's how I feel about it. It's how, I, I, it's how my parents have ended up. It's how parents and friends have ended up. Um, and I don't want to live like that. And I'm, I'm sick of being made to feel like that's how I should live. That's the only way of living life. Like, I love my kids. I love spending time with my kids. But at the same time, they're not, I'm not going to be parenting them forever. You know, my daughter is going to be four in June. Rowan is already two. Um, you know, but only little for long. And by the time they're, well, I don't know about kids these days, but my brother and I were pretty much um, self-functioning and, and self-sufficient by the time we were 10. I mean, when I was, my mum grew up in a very different time where you were expected to do a lot of things and have a lot of responsibility from a very young age. So by the time I was 10, I knew how to cook a roast dinner. Like my mum raised me to be a housewife. And there's no shame in that. I'm not I'm I'm not afraid to say that. That's because that's the world my mum grew up in. That was her expectation for me was to grow up, find a nice man, get married, have a brood of children and have Sunday roast every day. Um not every day. <laughs> but like have a Sunday roast every weekend and invite her around and cook for her and, you know do what she did for her mum. Whilst at the same time ignoring the fact that she did what she did for her mum whilst resenting every moment of it. Um, but you know, the Bible doesn't say you have to love your parents. They just say you have to honour them. Um, <laughs> the little loopholes in the Bible. This isn't going to turn into like a religious thing. I'm not religious. Um, in case anyone wonders. Um, I believe in a higher power. There's lots of things about Christianity I question, so I don't necessarily consider myself Christian. Um, but I do believe in, like, a higher, higher power. And, and yeah, that took a weird turn. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's been the same throughout, like, the last decade. Being made to feel bad about my choices because they're not what Ooh, bubbles <laughs> being made to feel bad about my choices because they're not conforming to the status quo they're not what the normal person would do like um cutting back my hours to do freelancing cutting back my hours to do makeup artistry and then being made to feel bad because there's not enough staff to you know cover the hours when you know my boss could have just hired another member of freaking staff being made to I don't know. Just any time I did anything that involved cutting hours at work, I was made to feel bad because I was inconveniencing them. And it's, again, the way I've been raised. Um, it's, it's like not to inconvenience other people. Like always think of other people, always have other people's um, feelings ahead of your own. And it's been to my detriment, I suppose you could say. <laughs> it's how I feel, it's how I feel, I'm, I'm sick of it. Um, and it's like the, the memes that are going around a lot, like the memes that no one's too busy to pick up the phone and you know, your friend, it, um, your, it's not that they're busy, it's just you're not a priority and that's a bad thing. Like when you're trying to 
work for yourself which has always been my goal I've always wanted to be in control of my own finances and where I get my earnings from I've always wanted that I've seen um both my uncles well well not both my uncles I have more than two uncles but <laughs> two of my uncles have lived this way and they are very successful um like I know this is not necessarily the best I like a glorious idea of success but to give an example one of my uncles he lives in a really nice village outside of town they have a lovely big house um, it was actually two houses divided so he had his in-laws living with him and they um you know they had the the financial freedom to add an extension onto their house add an extra floor onto their house they've just finished um knocking down a portion of their house and rebuilding it this is the level of freedom that being self-employed has given them that they can um grow their home and make changes and adjustments as they see fit because they can um, and nothing is holding them back i know it's like i say it's not like i know a lot of people have told me about like dave ramsey and there's a lot of uh, frugal YouTubers I started watching and they, they always um, tout the the mentality that, you know, not buying a bigger house just because you can is frugal. Um, so I know this isn't exactly the prime example of what financial freedom can get you. But it, in a way it is because they've always been frugal regardless. Um, I remember my mum mocking them for getting the um the voucher holidays out of the sun which is um i know a lot of my viewers are american but the sun is a daily newspaper here in the uk and they always every year do these holiday vouchers where you can basically go on a holiday for like 15 pounds 20 pounds um and he has four kids yeah they had four kids um, and they that's how they went on holiday every year they got vouchers out of the out of this out of the newspaper to do it I mean why not you just because you have the money doesn't mean you have to spend it you can grab a bargain where you can and then spend your money on what you want to which is why I've always wanted to be financially free I'm sorry this video is all over the place I have little notes to keep me on track but I haven't like set this video up very well but getting back to being busy, when you're trying to get a business up off the ground, particularly something like YouTube or blogging, where it's content based, where you're doing everything yourself, you're writing the same tune, you're singing the theme tune, you're directing the video for the theme tune. Um, I'm sure only a few people will get that reference. <laughs> but you know, when it's all systems go and you're the only person doing it, it takes a while. You are busy. You are putting in 15 hour days and having people hassling you and being like, oh, you're just, you just don't want to be there for me, you know, for their, I hate to say it, petty dramas. Oh, that guy you hate that you're still with is being a dick to you again. You know, I don't like him. You know I don't. Don't ask my advice. I'm just going to tell you to leave him. That's usually what it boils down to. They, like, friends who are no longer friends would moan that I was never there for them. And then when I did make time for them because they were just, they made me feel so bad about not being there for them. It would just be the same petty drama over and over again and I just give them the same advice I give them over and over again and now that we're not friends they finally had the epiphany of the advice I've been giving them for years and left the douchebag <laughs> that was giving them jip all this time you know it's fine I don't get why people ask advice when they're not going to take advice like I just don't. And the end of it all, it just made me see that they weren't really my friends because they didn't support me for what they were doing. Well, didn't support me for what I was doing. All they wanted was my attention. All they want, they only ever want to contact me when they want something or they've got no one else. I'm like their backup plan. 
and I've I've had enough of it over the course of 2019 I've just stopped talking to people I've, I've stopped letting it bug me that I see pictures of people going up on my friends list on Facebook they're all out for a meal they're all out to the pub because I turned them down twice they stopped asking me you know we'll just ignore the fact that I've got two kids and a job and you know responsibilities like school runs that kind of thing and um, you know you can't just text me and be like oh do you want to go for lunch in half an hour no no I can't unless you're gonna let me take my kids with me which can't to a pub so um I know some pubs are all right with it but the, the places that they like to go like bars rather than pubs I suppose like no I'm not gonna be able to take my fish chair and my two toddlers with me Like, it, it bugs me now talking about it because I'm actively putting it in my consciousness. But generally speaking, I just, I've, I've learned just, just to not let it bug me. Like, if they don't want to spend time with me, then fine. I'm just not going to bother reaching out to them. Like, that's another thing, another meme that really bugs me on Facebook. The, the whole, I feel guilty for not checking up, my, up on my friends. And then I realise the phone works both ways. It's like... Yeah, you're talking about your anxiety whilst ignoring the fact that your friend probably has anxiety. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> if you feel like checking up on your friend, check up on them. And if they don't respond, then don't bother checking up on them, I suppose. But whenever I think of someone, like throughout 2019, I made a conscious effort of whenever I was thinking of someone, I would drop them a message on Facebook and see who responded in half the time nothing nothing came of it so I had a big well screw you guys moment um, no that is nasty outside our garden we have play equipment we've got like a jungle gym swings a little roundabout thing and some seesaws and stuff and there's a guy just moved in right next door to me he's got this massive like like american pitbull type dog and he's out there exercising it around the play equipment and it just peed on the stuff like i'm sorry no you're not like firstly firstly in scotland it's against the law it's against the law to exercise your dog in areas where there's children play with play equipment it's it's actually forbidden but to allow your dog to pee on on play equipment and if, if that dog poops you better bloody pick it up i will actually be furious i will oh. yes i am that person i am that person i hate people that don't clean up after their dogs and don't have any respect or concern for public property or the well-being of others in society just know you know this is why i don't like this whole you do you boo oh if they don't like me for who i am then screw them culture it just leads to this um culture of everyone being selfish and self-centered oh I'm being a dick and you're calling me out on it but I'm just being myself being yourself doesn't give you a pass to be an asshole like being yourself means like hey if you want to if you want to like the tweenies and no one well that's a bad example who knows about the tweenies anymore like if you um god I honestly cannot think of an example apart from the bloody tweenies. Like, say you're like 14 or something and you still want to play with Barbies. That's what being yourself is. Like, have, uh, having the confidence to play with your Barbies no matter what anyone else thinks. Like, that's what being yourself is, not being a dick. Just opening your mouth, how my mum would phrase it would be opening your mouth and letting your belly rumble. Talking shite. So 
to sum this video up, my goal for 2020 is to stop caring so much about what other people think of me. Stop putting everyone ahead of my own happiness. Um, actually get stuff done rather than waiting for the right time. Um, and ultimately, I would like to be working for myself by the end of the year. I don't know necessarily what I'll be doing, but I'm going to make it happen. Come hell or high water, I will be self-employed by the end of this year. I am, I'm sick of working. I don't want to say it in case my, my boss sees it and then decides to sack me, but generally speaking, I'm sick of selling my labour for pins. I am. Like, I'm never going to earn. I remember having this conversation with my dad once and I ended up howling. The job that I'm in, I'm a waitress, okay? There is no promotion. There is no career path there. Like, the only way I would become manager or supervisor is if I'm married into the family or they retired and even then there's no chance of there's no guarantee that I'll get a promotion even though I've worked there for over almost a decade so yeah it's I'm never gonna earn more than what I'm earning where I am it's just not gonna happen the only time my wages go up is when the minimum wage goes up or when the personal allowance goes up which is like the money you can earn before you pay tax on it um, for anyone who's not in the UK <laughs> but um, it's a sad thought it's depressive it is, it's, it's claustrophobic to think that, that I put the, the my earning power in someone else's hands and I don't want to do that anymore I it's kind of what drew me to doing Avon this is not going to be an Avon pitch because I'm having a bit of hassle with that at the moment other video entirely if you want to see it I like with Avon that if I knock on someone's door and they say no, there's like a hundred other doors on the street I can knock on. There's a hundred other people on Facebook that I could pop up in the feed of. Um, I have a, a stall tomorrow in the common room of one of the tower blocks that are near here and I'm, I'm go I've got fairs booked throughout the year. Um, it gives you the potential to earn it's all about the drive you put behind it and it's the same with any self-employment the, the customers and clients aren't going to come knocking to you you have to go out there and find them you have to knock on all the doors call all the phones and make a complete fool of yourself sometimes but it's all in the effort of what you could get at the end um yeah, I'm going to end this video here because um, I feel like I'm getting a bit riled up and a bit um, incoherent. So <laughs> I will catch you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry for being an absolute moan and um, yeah, I just needed to vent and I know you guys are always so kind and supportive. Um, you alright pumpkin? The kids aren't feeling very well at the moment. Luna's been off school all week and Rowan has been pretty much clinging to me all week. Like, today's the first day I've been able to go longer than 10 minutes without holding him. And that's not even, that's not even exaggerating. Like, literally, today's Friday. On Wednesday, he would not get off me at all. Like, he was on me the entire day. I had to take him to the toilet with me. <laughs> the choice of being a mama. But um, he's feeling a lot better today. She's feeling a lot better today. Um, she'll hopefully be going back to school on Monday. Um, but yeah. She was feeling better earlier in the week, but she still wasn't quite better. I took her to nursery and she just... Like, this, the first time I had to take her home again right away because she was just not having it. Um, and the second time I got her into the classroom and one of the teachers was holding her. And um, I got out of the school and down the street just for another teacher to come running after me to come back and collect her because she was just she wasn't right and they were concerned about her and yeah so hopefully she'll be fine for Wednesday for Monday and we'll get her back to school and then I can get back to business as usual anyways 
<coughs> I'm going to quickly go edit this video, try and get it up straight away and um, yeah. I did want to talk more in this video about um, like makeup and money and my no buy and everything but this video is long enough so we're just going to save it for another video. Maybe next time we do dishes. Maybe next time we do dishes. So maybe this evening. We'll see. Anyways, um, yeah, I need to finish tidying up, get lunch on the go, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.